I'd like to introduce Mike Williams, the founder of Imagine Hypnotics, specializing in clinical and transpersonal and spiritual hypnosis for client growth and personal transformer, transformation. Hey, Mike, can you hear me? I can hear you, Bob. Thank you for having me on. There you go. See that? We got, we got, wow, this is great. We're connected. <laughs> yeah, we're connected. That, that, see, sometimes, you know, you wouldn't believe it. I mean, even in the radio business, I don't care what station you go to, every once in a while you hit the button and nothing happens. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of crazy. Uh, yeah, I did, I did introduce you. You do the, um, the, the clinical, uh, yeah. hypo, hyponics, what it says, uh, transpersonal, spiritual and there was one question I, even before i had you or i have you on the on the uh, show i'm already getting questions okay and one of the questions was uh regression yes rest uh yeah let me see what what did they put on you past life regression that was that was the one thing that they had said what about that okay. do you do that too I do past life regression, and in fact, I specialize in past life regressions, Bob. And um, uh, probably about half my practice is spent with people coming in to do past lives or some spiritual type of hypnosis. Um, many people come in; they're either familiar with uh, Michael Newton's books uh, dealing with past life regression, or Brian Weiss's book, the one that most people quote most of the time when they talk about Brian Weiss is uh, "Many Lives and Many Masters." Wow. So I do I do that work and uh uh it's it's really a, a very very uh fulfilling session for the clients when they come in. I mean they really they do enjoy it. Well, let me ask a question. I mean, do do people just come to you and they say I want to know, you know, whether I was a cat or a dog before I was in this body? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, seriously. Well, typically what ha- <laughs> No, typically what happens is folks will come in and um you know, they have a belief in reincarnation uh, for whatever reason. Maybe they were raised that way or over time they, has, they say to themselves, you know, I think maybe there's a little more to this. So they'll come in, but typically when they come in for a past life regression, what they're looking to understand is, one, you know, did I have a past life? And how can that past life help me better navigate my current life? People will come in and they will say to me, clients will say, Mike, um, I'm really having a tough life. I mean, things aren't going that well. My relations, my relationships are rough, and so on and so forth. And what they're trying to get a handle on is what is my purpose in this life? Am I on the right track? Am I doing the right things? Can I be doing things a little better? And by taking them back into a past life regression, their guides and their teachers, their spiritual aspects, you know, um, however people want to frame that, will actually take them into a life that will help them to better understand this life. So, for instance, if somebody comes in and says, like I said before, hey, I'm having a tough time, this go around, the guide, the guides and the teachers will take them back to a life uh, and say, okay, well, now this is tough. i to take you back a 1,000 years ago or 500 years ago, and, you know, you were working in a field, and, you know, this is how life was back then. It helps the client to get a perspective on this current life. It's, and that's just an example. I mean, there's many, many aspects and there's many, many ways to navigate that. But um, it, my clients find it very, very helpful and very, very fulfilling. Well, I understand. It's not something that, that is that easy. I mean, you really, I mean, you have to be a master at doing it or don't do it at all. Uh, well, yes, that's, that's exactly right. I mean, I tell my clients, uh, they call me and they'll, they'll inquire about it. Many of them will say, well, you know, I had a past life regression a couple of years ago, and the first question I ask them is, how long was the session? And many times, you know, the number I get back is, oh, it was like 30 minutes or 45 minutes, and I I tell them that that was not a past life regression. Um, When you go to a past life regressionist, the the one thing I ask them to do, whether they come to me or not, is to, first of all, make sure that they are certified hypnotherapists. Uh, with one of the major associations like the International Association for Counselors and Therapists or the National Guild for Hypnotists. Make sure that they're formally trained in regression. Um, there's a lot of hypnotists out there. They claim they do regression, but they learn their regression by reading books. And, you know, that's not really, in my view, um, the best way to um, get your skills up. Um, the past life regressions that I do, each session runs about two to two and a half hours. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah, yep, yep, because it takes a long time. 
I spend at least 45 minutes to an hour deepening the client into the trance state, getting them deep enough so that those channels open up. When those channels open up, the memories come in, and it becomes very lucid at that point, and um, they have the experience. So, so these are yeah, things that are actually, yeah, these are things that are actually impregnated in into into our brains that our brains have the i mean it's available to us it's just we yes. can't touch it that's exactly right I mean, you know we society and culture has taught us that you know, you know that our our mind our brain our body are just you know uh, very very one dimensional and all of your memories even if we don't even go into a past life but uh, even in this life here your unconscious mind has stored every single memory every single event that's taken place since the time you were born. In don't, fact, don't tell Microsoft that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly, right? So, so, so uh, Valley will take care of you very well. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, the memories are all there, and, uh, and all your past life memories are there also. Um, it's just a matter of being able to get into that state and be able to tap into it. Um, a lot of times people will say to me, well, how come this, you know, it just doesn't happen? How come... I have to go to a guy like you to make this happen. Well, it's because the way the society is today, the way the culture is today, people aren't taught that. They aren't taught about their mind, body, spirit connection. And so, you know, we have to work to get you into that state. And once we get you into that state, you'll have the experience. Wow. And I know, I, I mean, I was looking at uh, some of the people that you studied under. I yeah. mean, it's like the, the who's who of the hypnotist. Um, valley. I mean, it's like wow. I mean, you've you've had you've had uh, tutelage by by the best. Well, I mean, I did my my studying and my research. Uh, did a lot of reading. You know, uh, my you know uh, most important mentor, I would think. Uh, you know, of course, if you haven't met him. You know, um, Milton Erickson's not here anymore, but his books and you know, study his his works is the. Um, the king of hypnosis. Um, and I always tell people who are going through hypnosis or going through the training and want to learn hypnosis that if, if you don't study Milton Erickson, you, you're really not studying hypnosis. So you really need to understand um, Erickson's techniques uh, in order to really understand how to go about hypnosis. I mean, he was the master. It's, you know, one of the reasons that, that I did want to have you on the, on the, uh, on the show is because so many people, I mean, a lot of people, I mean, you, you see it. I mean, it's, it's even on Craigslist. <laughs> I mean, for crying out loud. I mean, I saw a hypnotist on, on Craigslist. <laughs> could, you, could you imagine a guy like that? Oh, baby. Anyway, the, the thing that was that nobody really understands what it is. I mean, everybody believes things like, uh, you know, uh, Transylvania, you know, like uh, you will do what I tell you right, to do, right. and all that kind of stuff, or, or or the crystal in front of your nose and that, or the or the metronome going back and forth, and th this is where they connect everything, but they don't understand the plain fact that this is more, way more, tons more than that. I mean, it's actually taking somebody and putting them in uh, an actual, uh, how would you say it? Um, it's, it's a trance state. It's a, it's a trans state, but it's like you're asleep, but you're awake. Yes, yes, exactly right. You know, and you know the the point you t you touched on there, Bob, is I, I do you know tell folks uh, you know I get calls that everybody comes to me because you know where they're located, whatever it may be. But I always say to them, make sure that you're going to a certified hypnotist. Make sure they have a major association behind them because there are a lot of hypnotists out there. Um, you know, they're not doing the right things. And they're not skilled, and uh, many of them are out there, and they're just reading scripts. Um, basically, they try to get you into hypnosis, into a trance state, and then they just pull out a book and they start you know, reading suggestions. And I don't operate that way. Um, the most effective way for hypnosis to take hold is the session's got to be interactive. And yeah, that's where you're. That's where you're very different. That's that's why that's one of the reasons that why I wanted to connect with you, and that because you are that different. I mean, you're actually you're you're having a relationship with this person through their mind through your suggestions but you're understanding them while you're doing it right well that's exactly right because see the way it works is in order for somebody to resolve conflict it's not me telling them how to resolve the conflict all i can do is facilitate and navigate the session 
the actual conflict resolution has got to come from the client. So when they're under hypnosis, their unconscious mind is very aware of what needs to get done to resolve that conflict. And the unconscious mind will come up with ideas and suggestions and things to do in order to correct a behavior or correct a reaction or to reframe it. Um, that's very different than um, a hypotherapist or hypnotist sitting there and putting a client in and just reading to them. Uh, I don't read to my clients. I let the, cl the client does work with me under hypnosis. They're actually working and processing through the conflict, trying to figure out how to resolve it while they're in a hypnotic state. Wow, that's excellent. Here's a question for you, though. Um, can anyone be hypnotized? Or, or are there people, and I've, I've seen this, I mean, I was also in the entertainment business, business for many years, and I saw people on stage doing this, and I've seen people say, no, no, you can't hypnotize me, and they weren't. You couldn't. Right, right. Well, I mean, this is the way I answer the question, because I get that question a lot. If, if you're really willing to be hypnotized and you're open to it, you will be hypnotized. Now, there's varying degrees of trance. It could be light trance, medium trance, and deep trance. Um, for hypnosis to be effective, even just a light trance is fine. But the deeper you go, um, uh, you know, I'm not going to mislead anybody, the higher the probability and the odds are that the conflict will be able to be resolved and you'll be able to, you know, uh, improve your life. Now, if somebody doesn't want to be hypnotized and they resist, they won't be hypnotized. Um, and, I, and I know people like that, too. They say to me, well, you know, I bet you can't hypnotize me. I said, well, I bet I can't. <laughs> because if you're going to come to me and you're going to, you're going to fight me or resist, then that's not going to happen. That's but like I, what I always tell people. Yeah, bad attitude. <laughs> bad yeah, well, attitude. what I always tell them is if you resist anything in life, right, you're not going to be successful. So this, this is no different. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I mean, I actually had somebody that said to me one time, I mean, we, we, I was a, a singer at the time, and uh, the hypnotist that was there and that said to me, he said, well, he said, don't worry about it. You don't have to look or listen to me. He says, don't worry, you won't, you'll be fine. And I said to my sister, go ahead, do what you want to do. I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, you're going to do it, go ahead. You know, I don't care yep. if I'm standing there. You know, I'm not going to do anything. I mean, there was no way, come on, you would, Mike, you had to be there. So You had to see somebody do this. I mean, people were ch jumping around like chickens. You know, jumping up and down on one foot, uh, putting between two two uh, chairs, and just kind of sort of like a board, right? Kind of thing. I mean, these are all these are all trans too, but nowhere near. I mean, you're you're in the 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 almost medical side of the hypnotize. Well, we. Rainbow. I mean, I take I, I take you know the, the clinical approach, and which means this, you know some of the stuff that you were explaining there. That's what we refer to as stage hypnosis, and even with stage hypnosis. Uh, the people that want to cluck like chickens and bark like dogs, right? Yeah. These are people that want to cluck like chickens and want to to bark like dogs. The one thing under hypnosis is it's a misnomer that uh, you know because we're so inundated with what is um, shown to us on TV and movies and everything else about what hypnosis is about. You cannot do anything under hypnosis that you don't want to do, and the reason for that is because. In hypnosis, what we're doing is we're bringing the unconscious mind to the forefront. We're making that the predominant part of the mind that we're going to deal with at the moment. But your conscious mind never leaves the session. So your conscious mind always hangs in the background, and if something is going on in that room or some suggestions coming across that the conscious mind doesn't agree with, it's going to cut it off and say, I'm not doing that. So when you see stage hypnosis, what you're seeing is, you're seeing people that are really, really willing and saying, "Okay, I'll do that. I'll just, I'll do anything." And 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 when they do that, they put themselves in a very suggestive state because you know that's their inclination, and they'll go off and do it. But you can take some other people, and you'll tell them, "Okay, I want you to cluck like a chicken," and they're like, "I'm not doing that," and it won't happen. So there's nothing you can't do anything in hypnosis you don't want to do, or anything that will violate your moral convictions. None of that stuff. How about suggestions? Well, so, you know, suggestions, suggestions um, uh, again, um, what I do is I work with the client under hypnosis, and I have the client formulate their suggestions based upon under hypnosis, the client is, is working through what the issue is. So, for instance, if a client comes to me and says, I have anger issues, and I, I'd like to resolve being angry. I don't like being angry. So what we'll do is, or what I'll do is I'll take them back, I'll regress them back to when, Anger first became an issue for them in their life. And it could go all the way back to when they were five or six or seven years old. 
And I have him go back there. And then at that point, we start working through what was the situation, what were the circumstances, what was going on, how do you feel about that. And ultimately, what you're working toward is asking the client, so how do you, what do you believe is the best way to resolve the conflict? What do you need to do? So what, when you do that, what's happening is the client now is deriving and building their own suggestions. They're building their own roadmap, their own plan to getting themselves better and healthy. So they're their own GPS in their own brain. Yes, right, right. And so, and so what will happen is, you know, at the end of the session, to kind of firm it up, what I'll do is I will give them suggestions. But my suggestions are revalidating, reconfirming what we've already worked through in the session. So if they say, well, to be less angry, I have to get more time. I have to, I have to relax more. I have to not whatever. I will basically, from a suggestion perspective, and say, and you're going to relax more, and you're going to spend more time with your family, or whatever it may be. But that's the interactive aspect of it. And, you know, that's the way, when, if you're going to go do hypnosis, find a hypnotherapist, in my view, that, that operates that way. It's not just a script writer. Because if it's a script writer and they're just, you know, trying to ram suggestions down your throat or into your mind, um, that's not going to be very effective. No, I would say if it's not, if it's not the honest truth, then it's not going to get them anywhere. Right. Well, like I said before, the unconscious mind, you know, the mind will reject suggestions it doesn't agree with. So, oh, really? you know, even if you think you're giving the person the right suggestions, um, if you're not interacting with them, you have no idea whether they're rejecting those suggestions or not. Wow. So you may think you had a very successful s session. In the meantime, the, the client's sitting in the chair the whole time saying, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that either, you know. And so it, it winds up not being a successful session. Yeah, of course, because they, they put a wall up. Right, exactly, exactly yeah. right. What is the what is the difference? All right, how do how do you guys interact with uh, say the medical uh, medical people in uh, healthcare? Well, it, it depends. and I'm only saying this now because uh, when when you when we're talking about things like alcoholism, um, yep. the people who smoke too much, and a whole bunch of other things that that are out there, and that these are actually things that to take care of clinical problems through hypnotism. Right, right. So what, what we don't do and what, you know, uh, we, we can't do, but we just can't do it and we shouldn't do it, is uh, we are not medical people and we should never make claims to the, to the effect that, you know, we are uh, an alternative to medical help or medical assistance or even, you know, uh, psychiatric or psychological uh, therapy. So we're not that. So we don't replace any of that stuff. Uh, what happens most of the time is more and more of, the, the medical community is getting on board with the fact that it's not just a matter of just writing prescriptions and, and doing this stuff here, that there is a mind-body aspect of it, and that mind-body aspect can be very healing and can bring a lot of relief and wellness to the person. So what typically happens is we will get a referral. Um, in my case, referrals will come from um, therapists, um, psychologists that will say, okay, we're doing talk therapy, but I do think that some hypnosis would be very beneficial also. So that's how it, that's how it kind of works, from, uh, at least from my perspective, in, in my practice. I will get referrals that way. But we do not replace, we do not claim to replace or, you know, um, uh, circumvent any kind of medical uh, work that's going on between the client or doctors or their therapists. Cool. All right, listen, we're going to take a short break. Okay. And it will be right back because I got a whole bunch more stuff coming coming through my chat box. So, okay. all right, I'll be right back with you. We're back. Yes, the Bob Charles Show is back. Hey, listen, don't forget to call 843-225-8292. Dang it. Put your phone on the hand. Uh, put your phone on the hand. Yeah, put your hand on the phone and, and call in. Ah. See, I was just talking about articles that of uh, of uh, Paul Ryan, uh, which is sticking his uh, his foot in his mouth up to his uh, kneecap at a speech the other day. But I'll tell you something; I'd rather stick on my subject right now with Mike. Mike, you there? I am here, Bob. The man, the guy, he is there. Hey, listen, here, here's a question for you that 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 I'm getting. Do you need a license? Well, that depends. Uh, in North Carolina, where I operate out of, uh, North Carolina is, has not adopted education and training standards. So uh, what happens is uh, it's basically what we refer to as um, it's a self-regulating profession. 
Um, but, you know, you should always look for a hypnotherapist, as I had mentioned before, that has been trained and certified by major associations like the International Association of Counselors and Therapists, which is called IAC, or the National Guild of Hypnotists. Aha. Uh, different, so different, states are have, different states have different, you know, uh, approaches to this. But North Carolina is it's self-regulating. Oh, that's, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. I tell you what, with, with, as far as hypnosis is concerned, what can, or, or how can, well, let's put it this way, how could hypnosis help me? Well, hypnosis can help you by you improving aspects of your life. So if you take a look at your life or some behavior or something you want to improve upon, you want to be better at, I want to have more self-confidence. Um, as an example, what will happen is you, you come to a hypnotherapist, you come to me and you say, Mike, I want to improve my confidence level. I want to be more sure of myself. I want to lose some of this stress and this worry. And so, you know, we'll lay out a program and it may take, you know, a few sessions to be able to, you know, to tackle those issues, resolve those conflicts, because if you come to me and say, well, I want to improve my confidence, it, what you're telling me is, I think I have a self-confidence issue. So we have to try to understand is what, what is that self-confidence issue? What's driving that? What's the underlying root cause that's creating you, uh, creating a situation where you believe that your, self-conscious, your self-confidence is not as strong as it should be? So, so we would lay out, or I would lay out a whole, uh, you know, program w- to help you with that and, uh, and get that confidence up. Yep. There you go. There you go. Uh, one of the, all right, put it this way. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a kind of a scenario here. Okay. If someone comes in to you, and that, this, this is, this is, this goes on, goes back to the other question that you can't, you can't hypnotize me. The, if someone comes into you and they say, listen, I want to get rid of this or that or the other thing, maybe it's, you know, something they do, maybe it's something they don't do, but right. they need to get what they have to change their life in that in some way. Can it be done in one session? Okay. Yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a question I get a lot too. And what I tell people is one session is typically not, uh, a reasonable expectation to, for most for most issues. So, in other words, this is something that you just can't get rid of in one shot. Yeah, because what I tell people, Bob, is is look. A lot of times they come to me and they'll say, "Hey, you know, I have anger or self confidence issues, or I have worries or fears, phobias, anxiousness." And then they'll tell me, and I've been like this for twenty years, ten years, twenty five, thirty years. And so what I explain to them is, okay, so your mind, your unconscious mind, working with your conscious mind, has basically fine-tuned this type of behavior um, over the last 10, 20, 30 years. So it's, it's going to take uh, more than one session to be able to get the conflict resolved and get you feeling better and, you know, getting on with life in a more positive way. Typically... Um, most sessions, I'm going to, this is just a ballpark now for anybody who's listening. Uh, typically, maybe three to five sessions is, is probably the, you know, what I would say is the average for the vast majority of the, the types of stuff that I deal with. So let me, let me just make sure that I'm making, that I'm understanding this. The first time or the second, the first and the second time in that are the actual suggestions and the rest is working on the suggestion. Yeah, it could be, well, it depends. It, the, you could resolve an issue in one session. For instance, I've had people come to me and they say they're fingernail biters, as an example. Um, fingernail biters, typically one session. Off with the fingers. Uh, <laughs> smoker, smokers, right? Smokers usually, you know, two sessions will do it. But some of the more complex issues, uh, the things I consider to be more complex would be, uh, you know, the, the personal development types of stuff or uh, goal achievement, pain management. People come to me because they want to be able to manage pain better. Um, that'll take a few sessions. The first two sessions is really, the first session typically is getting the client acclimated to hypnosis because most people, when they come in, they have never had hypnosis before. They don't know what to expect. So I can talk to them, and I do, and I can tell them to go to my webpage, and they do, but they still haven't experienced it. You know, So 
we have to get them acclimated at first. So the first session is usually getting themselves, you know, just understanding what hypnosis is, what does it feel like, and then, you know, this um, sessions two, three, four, five, as an example, build upon that. You know, I... It's that's kind of I guess every single every single person is totally different. Exactly. When you're working exactly like that, right. some of them some of them it works like one two three, and other times it just doesn't. That's exactly right. I mean, I had a, a, a gentleman come into me. He was an older man. Um, he started his whole life, and he called me up and he said, uh, "Mike, I'm just really tired of battling with this and, and dealing with it. Can you help me?" And I said, "I believe I can help you." And um, he came in one session. I uh, caught up with him about two or three days later via email. Uh, he was gonna he was gonna be speaking, and I said to him, "How'd you do?" He said to me, "I, I can't believe it." He says, "But I, I didn't stutter. It's the first time I hadn't stuttered in fifty years." Wow. So so that's an example of you know one session. Now somebody else can come in and also have a stuttering um, issue that they want to address. And it may not take one session. It may, two, may take two or three sessions because, like you said, Bob, it's it really dependent upon the person. Yeah, well, some people are just – I mean, I'm sure you bang into this all the time. Some people just have a stronger will. Yeah, they have – well, a stronger will or um, the issues involved are more complex. You know, um, you know sometimes uh, there, there are multiple aspects or facets that of conflict that we have to try to resolve. Uh, we try to hit the primary one first because a lot of times when you hit the primary one, secondary and tertiary types of issues are latched onto that primary. So once you collapse, collapse the primary, I call it the, the first brick in the wall. Once I pull that brick out, um, you know, secondary and tertiary issues usually you know collapse with it, and you have resolution. But sometimes that doesn't happen, and that's when you may you know you get into additional sessions to try to figure out what else is going on there. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, how about uh, do you ever get? Um, well, I've heard of this before, now, especially in New York. Uh, we come from that that area, New Jersey, New York. Uh, like uh, policemen that, that have problems with uh, just attitude, you know, problems that they may go to a hypnotist and end up there and that to kind of calm them down a little bit. Yeah. Um, you get you get law enforcement uh, comes in. Um, in my experience with law enforcement is that uh, anger issues. Uh, <laughs> control. <laughs> control. Yeah, okay. It's control. the same same thing kind of sort of. I, I, I don't want to say anger. It's 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 more like, you know, control issues. No, that's so, okay, that's my job. They they feel they feel like they have to control everything in their life. And it's it's not just at it's not at work, it's even when they go home, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, but, uh, you know, I tell you something, you know, but these are these are jobs where you're under pressure all the time. Huh? And especially Absolutely. in that especially in, in high crime areas and that you see more bizarre things that definitely do, whether you like it or not, do have an effect on you. And eventually, that effect will probably come to a head somewhere, and you'll blow up. Uh, exactly right. I mean, we, we typically refer to it today as post-traumatic stress. How about going I, my, postal? My, my, father was, my father was a New York City cop. So, uh, you know, I, I understand the trials and tribulations of, uh, of law enforcement, especially, you know, my father would come home and say, you know, don't talk he would to tell me. us some of the stories about what was going on. He would never get into great detail sometimes because, uh, you know, he was like, you don't need to know this. Yeah, I you mean, know? seriously. I mean, uh, you know, I had, a, I had a father. My father was a uh, was a truck driver, and uh, he was a truck driver in three states, which was Connecticut, uh, New Jersey, and New York. And they used to do a lot of work in that off uh, the air the air lines and the, the docks and all this other kind of stuff in it. And, I mean, they used to meet some people. Whoa. Yep. Like, unbelievable. And my father used to come home and he used to go, I'll talk to you in five minutes. That was, that was, that was a big, that was a big talk. He'd walk in the door. My mother would turn around to him and say, what's wrong? And he used to go, five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, compression chamber. <laughs> yeah. It was like, well, yeah, right to the bathroom. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. I mean, you know, but that's how we were. And that's how we were a long time ago. Today, I mean, uh, you know, well, come on. We've got we've got some really really crazy people around. I mean, look at the news. I mean, everybody's shooting somebody somewhere else. Why? I know. You know what? Who made who made that person that way? They're blaming a billion people for all these people doing what they're doing, and they don't realize that society made them what they are. Yeah, it's, I mean, the, the culture and the society. I mean, if you take a look at what's going on in the you know in the world and the country. It's all the, it's all it's the media. It's this. It's that. It's all the stuff. I mean. Um, you know, some people might not, you know, like what I'm saying. You know, uh, 
but you know, my, my point being is, if, you, if you're going to, if your kids are going to sit in front of the um, uh, video uh, game and they're going to play violent video games all day long, or for you know a vast uh, amount of hours every single day, then you shouldn't really be surprised if the kid you know has some issues with regard to anger and hostility. I yeah, mean, that's just a fact. I mean, that's just that's the way it works. If you do a regression but, but, on a guy, you'd be Mario. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, you know, some of these kids that today, I let's face it, there are kids that do study. And, I mean, you yes. can tell the minute they open their mouth, you can tell who it is right away, you know, because they have something to say. If yes. you're playing games that all the time, everything, all of your, your inside personal feelings and everything else are wrapped up in the game, in the screen. Yes. And what you're doing. And when you take a normal kid that doesn't do this all the time, They'll come and they'll they'll tell you about anything. Just ask them a question. They'll just bang. They got the question right there or the answer anyway, right there. And the thing is, Bob, what people have to realize is that television and video games are hypnosis because when you watch TV, it's emitting alpha waves. And that's why TV repeats pictures over and over again, imagery, imagery over and over and over again because your unconscious mind loves imagery. And that's why they keep repeating the same things over and over again. Some people will say to me, you know, I watch that TV show or that commercial. It's always on. They keep repeating themselves. Well, that's why, because that's what's going on. And when the kids sit in front of their video games, they're in that trance state. They're in an alpha state. And, you know, they're watching this violence if they're playing a violent video game. And, you know, and along with that violence, there's dialogue going on in that video game. So they're sitting in front of the video game in a trance state. And what's going on there is hypnosis is transpiring. A lot of people have no idea about that. They don't have a clue that that's what's going on, but that is what's going on. So what would you recommend a parent to do for their child? <laughs> besides well, besides throw would, the TV out the window. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would say, you know, I don't want to say that, you know, uh, you don't, don't play any video games whatsoever. I mean, you know, but I think that uh, there's got to be uh, more time away from that stuff. I really do. I mean... Um, I think it's up to each parent to decide what time away is and, and what they do and stuff like that. But I, um, part of the problem, Bob, is people don't really understand or, or realize what's actually transacting, what's really going on between the person playing the game and you know, sitting in front of it. Once you understand, what I always tell people is once you understand what's really going on, you will probably take that, that uh, PS3 or whatever it is they're using this day and, and throw it out the window. But the thing is, people have to get more educated about what's really going on. Yeah, uh, see, that, that's, that's the whole thing. Uh, I, I believe it. I mean, you know, and and uh, myself, my partner, I mean, the guys that, that are here and at the station and everything else, I mean, we see the same thing all the time. People don't read. They just don't. Yeah. I mean, they don't understand. They don't interact with, with things that are outside of what everybody else does. I mean, it's like they do it. So if right. they do it, it's okay for me. And they don't realize that many, many years ago, and I'm not saying it's that many years ago, maybe 20, 30 years ago, people were just the opposite. Right. That's exactly right. You know, we're going back into like the late 70s and the the, uh, late 60s and that when people rebelled. I mean, it was like, I'm going to read. I'm not going to watch TV. People people ate natural foods and that instead of something from McDonald's. Today, a whole entire society has gone upside down and backwards. Well, in society today, you know, what you have is a lot of groupthink and uh, people just, you know, uh, going along to get along, going with the flow, you know, that type of thing there. And so, I mean, this is what happens. And, you know, when that, that's been kicked in now for decades and uh, we're down that path and you, we're starting to see the, the results of that type of conditioning, that, that type of cultural and societal conditioning is starting to rear its ugly head now. So that's where hypnotism helps. Hypnotism, yes. Hypnosis can can certainly it pulls help. you pulls you back uh, to the earth for a little while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah hypnosis can certainly help. Um, people come to me, like I said, all the time to to address these types of issues. Yeah, the phone broke up a little bit there. Oh, uh, it did. Yeah, yeah. No, we're cool. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say. <laughs> okay. uh, you know, so hypnosis can can definitely help. Um, people, uh, clients come in to see me for various types of issues. I guess it's stre- excuse me, stress, fears, worries, anxiousness, self confidence, self worth, and I spend a lot of time also with uh, pain management. Folks come to me for arthritis, 
headaches, migraines, that type of thing there. So it's been very helpful for those uh, for those types of ailments also. That is that is something that that, that uh, you know we have. There's a lot of people that have all kinds of medical uh, things that wrong with them and things, uh, all kinds of pains and things. Can you actually? Uh, put the put the pain in in submission just by cancel you know the suggestion of canceling pain. Uh, what you can do is you have to, you have to be careful because you have um, you know you actually have uh, organic pain which you don't want to really play around with right because that means something's broken like you have broken bone that's organic pain. But there is psychosomatic pain I and mean, you know and, and there's been many documented cases where you know somebody's lost a limb but the mind still behaves and uh, registers pain as if the limb was still there. You know, those types of things, you know, we can work with. Now, I mean, I have had uh, one client that came to me, a um, uh, lady in her late 40s, um, and she had, uh, rheumat- she had rheumatoid arthritis, and she was having a very, very difficult time functioning. That hurts. The medication wasn't working, which is typical with, uh, with uh, rheumatoid arthritis. And um, so what happens is when the medication doesn't work, that just makes the situation worse. The pain increases because now stress and worry and anxiety is built upon, you know, the inflammation, the pain that's coming along just with the arthritis. But uh, through uh, several sessions, uh, some Reiki and, uh, uh, you know, those types of modalities, um, she is in very good shape today. In fact, when she went to her uh, her doctor, he said to her, whatever it is you're doing, just keep doing. And what she was doing was uh, coming in for the hypnosis. You know what? I, we I, I was just going to say that you said Reiki. Um, are, you, are you a master of that too? Yeah, I'm a Re- Reiki master. Yeah, I have my Reiki master attunements. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Because yeah. we have... Reiki- I, I have a friend that who is who is a, a Reiki master, and that he's in England. As a okay. matter of fact, he visits here that once in a while, and uh, he's. Uh, I mean, you definitely when he's all done. I mean, you feel different. Yeah, Reiki is very very effective, and uh, it's hard for people to get their arms around because you know it's like radio waves; you can't see them, but they're there. You know. And um, if if people are interested, they can go to my website, um, imaginehypnotics.com, and I have a tab there for Reiki. And uh, you'll see a hyperlink for Reiki Really Works, and that is a recent study. It's about a year old where um, a lot of work was done, uh, research was done on the effectiveness of Reiki, and they uh, it was conclusive that Reiki was very beneficial, and a lot of hospitals today are incorporated into their healing, especially a lot of cancer hospitals. Yeah, they can actually find it. Yeah, well, what they're finding is, you know, the, the Reiki is is helping is helping the body to heal. It's helping the body to to feel better. Um, so, if you uh, if you know of a Reiki person or a Reiki master, or go get your own Reiki attunements, your, your life will get a lot better. I, I promise you. I couldn't believe it because he said to me, uh, his name is Keith. And uh, when it, when he ran his hand, I mean, this took a while. I mean, it's not something that's a one, two, three thing. I mean, yes. it takes a little while, and and for one for one thing, and then it looked like he was throwing a baseball <laughs> into me. Yeah. But but it was, uh, I mean, his the, the palms of his hands in that when he when he put them like up against or not touching me, but you know, close to my back, he, he they got warm. Yeah, exactly right. That's what happens. Uh, it, it's very warm sometimes. It I gets couldn't believe even, it. Clients will say it's, it feels hot. Yeah. And um, session, my sessions are about forty-five minutes to an hour. And uh, you know, with your attunements and when you do it, when a client is down, you know, when you're doing the reiki, you can actually feel where they have their energy blocks because as your hands are going, you know, along the body, you can actually feel where the the um, the energy is dense, and where you, you, we can feel dense. Um, energy, that's where there's blockages, and that's where we have to spend a lot of our time from, as a Reiki practitioner working to free up that density, you know, work out those blocks. Um, it's kind of hard to explain. It, it, it probably sounds very weird to a lot of people, but, um, you know, once you experience it, you'll, you'll get it. Uh, it's it's something, you know, like he, uh, when he was here from, uh, well, not here when I was back in New Jersey, uh, when he was with us, uh, he lived with us for about a week in between going to a seminar. It was out in Ohio, I believe. And 
when he was with us, Ned, we also I also learned how to douse from him too. Okay. And it was really really funny. Some people can't, and some people it just natural. I mean, he showed right. me how to do it, told me what to do, and everything else. And these things are actually moving in my hands, and I'm not moving my hands in a minute. Right. And they we're like all over the place. And I'm saying, and he said, "Look," he said, "You know," he said, "Your your energy." He said, "This is what's doing it." And I'm saying, "I don't feel no energy." And he said, "Don't worry about it. It's making it move." Right. That's that's exactly right. That's what happens. You don't feel it, so it's like nothing's happening, but actually something is happening. Well, he was more or less showing me what recce was in a sense. Yeah. Because even if I didn't have the the two rods in my hand, and that. Right. I should still be able to know or not know whether something is right, wrong, in between water, potties, whatever is wherever it's supposed to be, by feeling it. And what the bars were, they were just showing me what I had but didn't couldn't feel, but to show me it was there. Yes. And it was the most amazing thing that ever happened to me. I mean, I brought it to one of the seminars net that I went to and had to show people that, like, hey, look, you know, we really, really do have energy inside of us. Watch. And I showed them. Yeah, that's and they were shocked. Yeah. Well, see, the the, the thing is, uh, Bob, you know, we're we're taught that, uh, you know, we're not really capable of a whole lot from a mind body perspective. But the truth of the matter is, the mind body spirit is very very powerful. It's a very very powerful healing force. And you know, and I, even on my website, I tell people, look, begin to see yourself as a soul, a soul with a body, rather than a body as a soul. I mean, we tend to look at the body, and then everything else is kind of secondary. You're a soul first. You're an energetic being. And, you know, that's what's first. And this body is just a vehicle in which we come here to, you know, to, to learn our lessons and you know, go through life. But uh, but the body's not us. You know, the, the soul, the energy is us. Well, it's uh, what, I'm, what I'm actually being taught by people that are, that are you know, talking to me all the time is that uh, it's like putting a battery in a toy. We are, or the body that you can feel, is the toy. And the right. battery is the spirit. Yeah, without, the, exactly without the battery, the toy doesn't work. Without the spirit and the energy, the body doesn't work, doesn't move. Right. That's right. And more and more people now are starting to get this. Um, I can't tell you, you know, the practice has exponentially increased with the number of people coming to me saying, I'm truly sensing there's more to this than what I was thinking it was before. I'm, I'm understanding there's a bigger picture, a higher power, a bigger cause, whatever it is that you want to call it. But they're realizing that there's something much bigger that they're supposed to be playing in. And, you know, and so that's why more and more people now you're starting to see are moving toward holistic healing, uh, alternative medicine, going to hypnosis, Reiki, um, those types of things there because people are really starting to understand they're more than just this, like, bones and flesh type of thing. We're capable of a lot more. The uh, What I'd like to do, though, even though we're, we're almost out of, out of time, but what okay. I'd like to do is I'd like to ask you to come back sure. to the show. And the reason why is because I do have a lot of questions on here about recce. Nobody okay. understands it. They think it's, I mean, really, I mean, when I talk to people that about it that don't understand it, first of all, they ask me, what is it? And the second thing they ask me is, you know, is it Chinese? <laughs> and I say, no, 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 it's not Chinese. But, you know, uh, one last question, though, for you, Annette, before sure. before somebody, somebody comes through the screen and kills me. Can you hypnotize yourself? You can do self, yes, yeah, self hypnosis. Yeah, there is, there is, I mean, you can really do that and then, like, uh, come out of it alive? Yeah, all, all you're doing is putting yourself in a trance state, and um, I do it all the time. And if, if you know, self hypnosis is a wonderful way to really empower yourself and self improve. I'm not kidding you. But it's not transcendent. You, uh, you know, it's not. No. Uh, it's not a meditation. No, no, because me meditation, meditation uh, is different than putting yourself in hypnosis. With hypnosis, meditation is usually a very quiet state. You're not uh, processing through uh, something you want to improve. It's basically pulling yourself into a very quiet place and just being meditative. Whereas with hypnosis, going into a trance state, um, you're, you're actually working on improving. You're actually projecting imagery of improving yourself, uh, working on processing through what it is you need to do 
to be stronger, more confident, less afraid, you know, have less stress, that type of thing there. But, yeah, self-hypnosis is uh, is real, and uh, it's very, very effective. Wow. That's, uh, that's I don't know, as far as I'm concerned, that that's like some of, some of the best stuff I've heard anyway. I mean, you've explained a lot of things, Net, and kind of cleared a lot of things up for a lot of people. Um, we are going to take it down for the night, but um, I'd like to tell everybody, Mike, his name is Mike Williams. Uh, you can get him at 919-745-1225. Uh, you're in Raleigh now? I'm in the Raleigh, yeah, Raleigh area, yep. Raleigh, so it's the the Raleigh Hypnosis Center. It's Man. Imagine Hypnotics, yeah. We call it, you know, your Raleigh Hypnosis Center, but it's Imagine Hypnotics. Great. So again, that number is 919-745-1225. Mike, it's been great having you on the show, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, Bob, thank you very much, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. You have a great evening, and thank you, and uh, don't worry about it. We'll be in touch so you get back here and tell everybody about some more things. All righty, Bob. All right. Good night. Good night now. That's the Bob Charles Shows. Now, don't forget, when you're on the show, you got to call 843-225-8292. That's the way to get the show. That's the way to get in touch with these people. Let me tell you something. This person, Mike, and then it was just on the show, this was an education. People don't realize that hypnoto- hip- being hypnotized, hypnotized, in a sense, is not is just not something that you see on TV or in a circus or in a nightclub. Nobody's going to make you cluck like a chicken or anything like that this is something that's actually so close to to being something that people need more of it's a it's a holistic way of getting help for things that we are turning to too many doctors for let's face it if you're going to stop smoking for instance in three or four five different you know sessions with mike you will because your brain will tell you you can't, you will stop smoking. That doesn't mean that you have to stick all kinds of pieces of tape all over your arms and your legs and your abdomen and all over the place or take uh, too many uh, pills for caffeine this and caffeine that. This is something that, that your own brain tells you to turn it off. You don't need it. If you're eating too much, he can also hypnotize you so that you don't eat too much there's a lot of things in this that people don't know about and i'm going to bring mike back and at a later date and we're going to go through more things but until that time tomorrow we have rj Papalardo. we are going to learn a little couple little things in that about aliens a little bit about where we came from or where we're going to and you can hear them right here here and we're the only channel anywhere on this planet that's going to have that show for sure so you all have a good night it's a bob charles show god bless